Nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors. To the outside world, a business could look like a smashing success. There might be rave reviews about the CEO and stories about the millions of dollars raised, launching the business to the top 500 of the Forbes list. But the CEO has a secret. The company is actually teetering on the edge of financial ruin, and the CEO is about to have a nervous breakdown from the stress of keeping it together, for appearance sake. This is probably the reason why so few of you have heard about business cyberbullying. Entrepreneurs do not want to show signs of vulnerability. That is too taboo. It's a cutthroat world, and if a CEO shows weakness, competitors circle the Rolodex like sharks itching to grab any scrap of sales. What companies might call weakness, social psychiatrists call impression management, the fake it till you make it syndrome. The life of a business person is quite vulnerable fraught with countless setbacks. There is a juggling of roles, sleepless nights, crippling anxiety, depression and exhausting fear. Even during the good times, there is a niggle in the back of the neck that reminds them of the days of the abyss. For many small businesses, any little setback can be devastating financially. An accident can show its impact a year later after the business scrambled to find funds to pay everyday bills. Entrepreneurs will max out their lines of credit. They will cash in their 401ks, registered retirement savings plans, and whole life insurance values. They'll use their credit cards to pay other credit cards or bills. They'll exhaust every resource they can think of until they take the next step, humbling themselves, which is like admitting defeat to borrow money from their parents, kids, other family members, or friends. One of the reasons for the deep-seated feelings of depression is that business owners feel like their identity is tied to their business. So if their business fails, they are a failure. It is not a stretch for these feelings to transcend to thoughts of suicide. In both the United States and Canada, there are over 10 suicides for every 100,000 people. The World Health Organization shows that in 2009, the highest percentage of those who died of intentional self-harm were aged 35 to 54, then aged 55 to 74, then 25 to 34. The University of Oxford and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Ministry published that people who are on unemployment are two and a half times more likely to commit suicide. Bullying is really psychological harassment or violence. These are some psychological results from these experiences of bullying. Debilita debilitating anxiety, panic attacks, clinical depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, shame, guilt, overwhelming sense of injustice. Collectively, the fallout from cyberbullying is really a form of PTSD. According to the Canadian Mental Health Association, PTSD causes intrusive symptoms such as re-experiencing the traumatic event. Many people have vivid nightmares, flashbacks, or thoughts of the event that seem to come out of nowhere. They often avoid things that remind them of the event, can make people feel very nervous or on edge all the time. Many feel startled very easily, have a hard time concentrating, feel irritable, or have problems sleeping well. They often feel something terrible is about to happen. Most targets suffer in silent. They won't disclose the fact that they are being bullied, let alone let alone how they feel about it. Business cyberbullying is really commercial terrorism.